The Passover Guest, adapted from Der Kusenmacher, The Magician, by I. L. Pertez, by Susan Kussel, illustrated by Sean Rubin. Muriel loved Washington in the springtime. The white buildings stood out crisply against the green lawns. The cherry trees burst into pink blossoms at the Tidal Basin. She could feel Passover in the air. The year 1933 was different. Her father, like so many others, had lost his job. Her family didn't have enough to eat, even on ordinary days. It would be impossible to buy all the food needed for their Passover Seder. They didn't even have enough wine to fill the ceremonial cup for the prophet Elijah, who was said to visit every Passover Seder. So there was no need to rush home to prepare the holiday feast. Muriel walked slowly from the park and stopped to look up at Lincoln on his magnificent marble chair. A strange figure dressed in rags, juggling on the steps of the monument, caught her eye. He looked as threadbare as the men on the street, waiting in line for soup. As she watched, his brown hair turned red. The eggs he juggled became blazing candles. His shabby clothes turned into those of the finest silk. Muriel was amazed. She took her only penny and put it in the hat at the man's feet. He smiled at her. The sun is setting. Passover is about to start. You don't want to miss your Seder. My family isn't having one this year, Muriel answered. Are you sure? asked the man. Perhaps you'd better hurry home. He sounded so confident that Muriel started walking, quicker than she ever had before. She ignored the Washington Monument, gleaming in the fading sunlight. She rushed past the White House without a second glance. Gradually, the stately buildings began to recede. When she got to her neighborhood, her stomach grumbled as she smelled the delicious food from the other satyrs. The celebrations were smaller this year, but she could still see tables filled with food and windows shining with light. What could the man have meant? How could they have a feast without any food? Her feet went faster and faster. When she arrived home, she opened the door in anticipation, but she only saw the same shabby room with the spindly chairs and rickety table that had always been there. Her parents emerged from the shadows, dressed in their best clothes for the holiday, even though there was no food on the table, no gleaming silverware, no wine set aside for Elijah. "'Every door will be open to us on Passover,' said her father. "'Let us find another home where we can celebrate.' As Muriel reached for the door handle, there was a knock. When she opened it, she saw the mysterious stranger standing there. "'May I join your Seder?' he asked. You are welcome to share anything we have, answered Muriel's father, but this year we have nothing. I have everything we need, said the man. Muriel turned and looked again at the room. It was no longer shabby, but glowing with light from countless candles. The chairs were piled with comfortable pillows. And the food! There were mountains of tender brisket, oceans of flavorful soup, and fields of crunchy matzah. A magnificent seder plate lay in the center of the table, complete with an egg, shank bone, horseradish, parsley, lettuce, and horset. There was even a beautiful cup of wine for Elijah. Muriel hadn't realized she was hungry, but now she wanted to eat everything, even the horseradish. Muriel and her parents couldn't believe their eyes. After seeing so little food for so long, their house was now bursting with it. Can this really be? her mother asked. How is this possible? her father asked. Everything is possible on Passover, answered the man. Muriel could tell her parents were uneasy. She volunteered to ask the rabbi if they could proceed with this astonishing meal. She ran to the synagogue and found the rabbi about to start his own seder. She told him about their mysterious guest and how a magnificent feast had appeared from nowhere. If you can pour the wine and break the matzah, then what you have described is a true miracle, said the rabbi. Can you show me your seder? Muriel led the way, and the rabbi's curious guests followed. More people joined the procession as it passed other satyrs. When they reached Muriel's house, the crowd was enormous, but the stranger was no longer there. Everyone crowded into the tiny house. They all managed to fit inside as the rabbi examined the table. They watched as the wine poured itself, and then the middle matzah broke in two and became the afikoman the children would look for later. The rabbi picked up a piece of matzah, crumbled it in his hands, and then blessed the meal. 
This is not an illusion, he said, but a Passover miracle. We may all enjoy this beautiful feast. There were enough chairs for all. Their own satyrs forgotten, the guests joined Muriel's family in their retelling of the Passover story. They dipped their parsley in salt water and ate bitter herbs. Muriel asked the four questions about Passover. All the children searched for the piece of hidden matzah, which was found just before midnight. Muriel realized that in all the excitement, they had forgotten to open the door for Elijah. But when she looked at his cup, there was not a drop of wine in it. Now she knew who the mysterious stranger was.